One more time for the greatest team in America. Folks, this is Alan Tyson for Lee Hill and Johnston Insurers. Well, as most of you know, I'm seldom at a loss for words. But I gotta tell you, when the clock ran out on our birds two Wednesdays ago in the toothpick state, I was speechless. On a night when the crimson coyotes from Crape Myrtle City did everything they could to serve us up a victory on a silver platter, our bluebirds of prey could only manage three points off five A-State turnovers only got nine points on three trips inside the red zone, turned the ball over on downs at the Red Wolves 20 yard line, and only picked up three points and zero yards on 19 plays over their last six possessions of the ball game. Our defense, which had been stellar against the run over their first four games, holding their opponents to only an average of 77 yards per contest, gave up 343 on the ground on 49 attempts, an average of seven yards per carry. Though they fared a little better against the pass with two interceptions, they did give up two touchdowns through the air, one of those tying the game with only nine seconds left to play. Our birds, who led 13 to 10 at intermission, just could not find a way to hold on to a 26 to 17 fourth quarter lead and fell to Rackensack State by a final score of 27 to 26, losing for the first time in 18 tries when leading at the half. Folks, you talk about an anomaly. I mean, I think you're more likely to see a white elephant sometime before the end of the season than you are to see our men in blue play less opportunistic than they did in this one. Now, as disappointed as I am in this performance, I can only imagine how disappointed our players and coaches must be. Eagle Nation, we have a great opportunity to do our part in rallying the troops by continuing to encourage and support our student athletes and coaches who are working their rear ends off each and every week to be the best that they can be. Time to bounce back, Big Blue. As for today, our Eagles will be looking to pick up their first non-conference road victory since beating the Florida Gators at the Swamp to end the 2013 season as they travel to the state capital to take on Georgia Tech. The Yellow Jackets, who have lost 12 of their last 18 games dating back to the start of the 2015 season, have dropped three straight after opening the year 3-0. As you might expect, with Paul Johnson at the helm, these bumblebees from the Big Peach have rushed it 194 more times than they passed it in 2016. But a rank three spots behind our Eagles at number 17 in the country in rushing offense with an average of 229 yards per game. On the other side of the ball, these fireflies from Fulton County are ranked 52nd in stopping the run, while our feathered defenders are at 25th. Hey, you want to hear something crazy? Well, here's my theory. In a game between two teams that make a living running the ball and stopping the other team from running it, today's winner at Grant Field may very well be the team that passes it most efficiently. Now, that's my theory, but here's the bottom line truth. This is going to be a knockdown, drag out, slobber knocking fight to the finish between two teams both needing to find a way to stop the bleeding. Folks, you can look for this one to peel back the layers till you get down to the five fundamentals of football. Blocking, tackling, running, throwing, and catching. I mean, this is going to be mono e mono and a bad case of the wants. With only six wins in their last 18 games, this hive of hornets from Hot Lana may very well be getting used to taking it on the chin. But that for sure ain't the case for our boys from Bullock. 
I look for our men in blue to come out swinging with both fists for as long as it takes to pound these pests from just west of Peachtree. Get after these aphids from the ATL aggressively, Eagles. And folks, you just can't beat that. And you just can't beat Georgia Southern. And you ain't seen nothing yet. <laughs> <laughs>